YouTube, Dawson Ryder here with a review of the Ben 10 Omniverse Omni Link Omnitrix. Again, a long time coming for a Ben 10 review. There's been a bit of a drought, but I was very excited to finally find this new version of the Omnitrix. Um, unfortunately, I'm not necessarily going to be able to show all of its functionality because of the way it works. I'll explain that here in a second. Um, in a second, but literally right now. Um, here's the back. Um, this Omnitrix does have voices for all these aliens displayed here. Um, but it also has some special unique features. Um, it comes with a DVD, which contains one episode of Ben 10, um, which is the first episode of Omniverse. Um, just the first episode, not both parts. Um, and it has special clips on it that correspond with the Omnitrix that it works with. So I will not be able to show that because I don't want it to worry about music and video and copyright. Um, but I will explain how it works. There is also an app that this Omnitrix can work with. As of this recording, it is not out yet. It says coming soon on the site and I could not find it on the App Store. So, as soon as the app comes out, I will film a separate video for that and show that off. But in this review, I cannot show it. Um, but I will try to explain uh, everything to the best of my knowledge. But I will be showing the features that you can use this with on its own. So, anyhow, that's it. Uh, here's the DVD, just in case you wanted to see it. Um, like I said, it's got the first episode of Omniverse on it. And then it has a bunch of different clips. Um, so here we have uh, the Omnitrix itself. Um, it's actually pretty nice. It's very big, just like the other ones were. Obviously, they kind of have to be to feature all the sounds, but it actually looks really nice and is probably the most screen accurate one uh, we've gotten. Uh, Color-wise, it's perfect. It's got the white and green. It all looks very nice. Um, a really nice display piece. Um, and just like I said, the right, most screen accurate one right off the bat. Here's the straps, uh, same exact system pretty much that we're used to. A little bit different of a peg system, but you just, you know, place them in like this. Um, here's just a real quick comparison. Here is the Omnitrix version 2, which was the more screen accurate version of the, or Omnitrix version 2 touch, excuse me. As you can see, um, this one's a little bit bigger in some ways, but I believe um, thickness wise, it's actually a little bit thinner. Um, but this one, uh, the Omnitrix version 2, oops, a little bit too early for that, uh, version 2 touch was a little bit more screen accurate, but obviously on the show it's not clear. Um, so this one is clearly more screen accurate than it. Um, and then here is the original Omnitrix touch, um, which was in the gray color, which wasn't very accurate. So uh, those are both good Omnitrixes, but this is the most uh, screen accurate one easily um, of the bunch. And as you saw, when you press the button here, this presses up here to reveal a dial, uh, like it would on the show, and it's going to change and move and all that stuff. So fun. And, and it's accurate, because it folds up, just like it does on the show. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I said, very good looking, easily the most screen accurate um, of the bunch. Uh, so for sounds, you turn it on right here, and it'll make a confirmation noise. Pretty standard. Alright, so it's going to have two modes here. Um, one is going to allow you to use your default sounds. Um, and then two is presumably used for the app and for the TV thing. I believe on the DVD instructions it said one is used for it. Um, but one and two both work for the DVD app. Um, or the DVD functionality. And I'll explain that in a minute. I'm going to go over all the regular sounds first and then I will explain the uh, DVD features. And as I said, there will be a separate video for the app um, that I'll use for my iPad. Um, but I have to wait till the app comes out. So anyway, I'm on mode one right now so I can get the regular sounds. So just press this button. And we'll get confirmation noises, a little bit com uh, combination of the Alien Force ones actually. Um, so the way this one works is you turn the dial and when you turn it, it will make a little sound that uh, corresponds to an alien. And then when you press it in, it will have the alien scream its name like usual. And this is actually done in a very specific order. Um, and it's actually the same order that's on the uh, packaging here where it goes uh, feedback through Diamond Head. So I will demonstrate that now. So if you just press it in like this, it will just make generic transformation noises. But so now we, we will turn it and it will make this noise. And it will make that little bit of an alien noise and then press it in. and it'll say feedback. And I don't know if you can necessarily tell, but this thing actually vibrates, which is kind of neat. Uh, so it'll make vibrating noises when you get the confirmation noise and when you press the alien in. So then if you press it up again, and then turn it, it'll make the feedback noise again. 
and it will do feedback again. So it goes in a cycle. So you can't do feedback and then uh, press it down and then switch to the next alien. It goes kind of on like a rotating system. So I'll turn this once. There's the feedback noise and then if I turn it again on two, there we have blocks. Okay. Now we'll have to cycle through the noises again, so we're going to want to get shock squash, so we're going to have to do it three times. So, feedback, blocks, now this is the one we want, shock squatches, alright, and now we're going to want, the next one is grab attack, so we're going to have to turn it four times, so, one, two, three, four, that's grab attack's noise. I think you can hear it buzzing there. I think it buzzed pretty loudly. All right, now we're gonna need to turn it five times to get Kick and Hawk. One, two, three, four, five. It's pretty obviously Kick and Hawk. Okay, and now Crash Hopper. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, now, Snaro, also known as Ben Mummy. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Snaro, all right, now, eight times we will get forearms. And I just realized in the excitement I forgot to show his little noise, so we'll cycle back to that again. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is four arms' there's noise. And then we'll do one more. This is going to be Humongosaurus. For nine. Well, that was four arms again, I'm sorry. That whole thing threw me off. So those were four arms as two noises, so now... This is Humongosaur. Okay, so now we have to go ten times for Astrodactyl. Astrodactyl. All right, we're in the home stretch. Two more. Heat blast. So th for these, I'll speed it up a bit. Heat Blast. Alright, and now last but not least, my favorite alien, Diamond Head. Alright, so that is all the voices you get with it. Um, it's actually really time consuming and kind of annoying to do it manually like that. Um, so if I wanted to do Diamond Head, I gotta turn it 12 times, make sure I count it out and hit it. Really annoying. Um, how the DVD feature works is you leave this on, um, and you play the clip corresponding to the alien, and then while the clip's rolling, this will randomly activate, and it will make the noise that is designated to that alien, and it will also shout out its name. So, it's not a huge amount of functionality, it's just a couple noises, but it's a really neat idea and kind of fun um, for the first little bit. Um, there's also a feature on the DVD that says Bonus Aliens, where it shows clips from several of the aliens that aren't included on the box. Um, you get, you do not get voice sounds from them that I've seen, just some, um, a uh, little bit of battle sounds or whatever, and I believe there's Echo Echo, NRG, and Wild Mutt, 
and cannon bolt, and there might be one I'm forgetting, but there was just some little generic sounds. I really don't have a way of showing that at the moment, but it was really nothing special, no name shout out. It was just sort of some generic battle noises that you might not even be able to differentiate. So that's exactly what the DVD does. Um, the app, I'm not entirely sure at the moment. Like I said, there will be a separate video for the app. So anyway, overall, this is a sort of neat Omnitrix. Uh, like I said at the beginning, it's a really nice screen accurate representation of it, so it's a good display piece if you really are uh, want a good screen accurate version. Um, it's got a lot of neat voices. You got 12 aliens, you got some of the newer ones uh, that have been reintroduced and introduced into the show, like uh, Snarrow and Astrodactyl, and Diamond Head, who hasn't gotten a voice by yet. But, like I said, it's really obnoxious the way that you work it by turning it like that. I actually, in terms of functionality on its own, do prefer um, the way the Omnitrix Touch worked. Um, that being said, uh, the features with the DVD and then the eventual app are actually really neat and are a good way to make this um, sort of a different purchase for you. So even though the DVD is kind of thin um, and it just does those couple noises, it's a neat technology. Um, and like I said, I haven't been able to explore the app yet, but that looks pretty neat. So overall, if you really want a screen accurate Omnitrix, it's a little bit better than I can recommend it. But otherwise, I think I would still go for the touch. It's a lot easier and fun to use on its own and doesn't require other things. But this does have some neat technology in it. Um, so we will uh, take a look at this again in the um, app overview. So anyway, that is about it. Until next time, make sure you check out the crazy podcast, RidersRangesRambles.com. Until next time, Stossom Rider, signing out.